Hola and welcome to Pro Spanish. In today's video, you're going to see just how quickly you can build up your language starting with a single word. Our more advanced subscribers, you can skip forward to the time frame that comes up on the screen now or stay with us for the extra practice. Okay, let's start off with estar, estar. So estar is to be, often remembered as to be a star, to be a star. So estar to be. We could be in Madrid. Estar en Madrid. We could estar en México. To be in Mexico. So estar to be. Now if we want to say been, so I've been somewhere or I've been doing something, it's estado, estado, which incidentally also means state, like Estados Unidos is United States, estado, state, and it's been. So estar, to be, estado, been. And you can see the end part has just changed to ado, okay, so estado, been. So we could say Estado en Madrid. Been in Madrid. Estado en México. Been in Mexico. Although in English we would tend to say I've been to those places rather than I've been in. But in Spanish it stays with the in. So been in somewhere. So been. Estado. And we want to say, I have been, I have been to these places, or we've been. You may well know that tengo is I have. Tengo. So you may think, well, why don't we just say tengo estado, I have been. But in Spanish, there are two types of have. One is having something. And the other is have, but used with a verb like estado. So we can't use tengo here. The other I have is just e. H-E. E. So we didn't pronounce the H. E estado. Estado. I have been or I've been. He estado en Madrid. I've been in Madrid. As I mentioned earlier, we would tend to say I've been to Madrid in English. How would you say I've been to or I've been in Lima, the capital of Peru? What would that be? He estado en Lima. He estado en Lima. And you'd also be able to say he estado en la capital. La capital. I've been to the capital. He estado. I have been. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Practicar. Practicar. Nice and easy. Practicar is to practice. Practicar. To practice. So first of all, how would we change that to practiced? Remember how to be a star, estar was to be, and we changed it to estado for been, estado. So we've got practicar to practice. So how would we say practiced? Practicado, just the ado, practicado. So practicado, practiced. How about I have practiced? What would that be? That little word that was I have. He practicado. He practicado. I have practiced. He practicado. And you may be able to say, I have practiced Spanish. He practicado español. He practicado español. Okay, so 
we're going to open this up now so we're going to go through some other options other verbs using this I have done something so let's look at the first one hablado de eso hablado de eso so hablar is to speak or to talk hablado spoken or talked hablado de eso talked about that hablado de eso talked about that next verb is usado so it came from usar to use and usado 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 esa excusa used that excuse and you can see how I'm adding language on that's easy to remember so we can kind of remember this as a as a unit as a fragment usado esa excusa used that excuse and we'll just take a brief pause to let that sink in while I mention our very popular levels one to six course this takes the complete beginner or near beginner right up to a conversational level of Spanish in a series of easy to follow steps and the all-in-one package now includes 600 listening pyramids a unique pro Spanish application which will get you to conversation fluency faster all the lessons on this YouTube channel are supplementary whereas the core pro Spanish course is very much a step-by-step -step program delivered by the same teacher as all the other videos on the pro Spanish YouTube channel and while the style is very similar to what you've been used to here on the channel the important key difference is that every lesson carefully builds on the previous lessons so that you can really feel that sense of progress of going from little or no Spanish up to a level where you can confidently hold a conversation and this is only available from prospanish.co.uk the next one we've already seen practicado practiced practicado esa lección practicado esa lección practiced that lesson next one we've seen this as well estado en madrid estado en madrid so being in Madrid kind of depending on the context it would be more usual to say been to Madrid estado en Madrid the next one is llamado a Miguel llamado is called so you can guess that to call is llamar llamado a Miguel to call Miguel and you notice a little a there in English that would be to so in English we would say call to Miguel I need to call to Miguel later llamado a Miguel and just very briefly the a there is called a personal a so in Spanish when there's a verb followed by a person so call someone see someone then we have this a this personal a so we would say I saw two Miguel the other day and that two is the, is the a the a Miguel okay it's not important to commit this to memory I mention it because I know that some of you will be interested some of you who are just starting out a reminder that you don't need to remember all this now you do not need to commit it to memory just follow the flow of this lesson and you'll be really surprised at how much you've learned by the end of it okay so next is read that book leído ese libro leído ese libro and you'll notice now that up until this point it's been ado hablado usado 
practicado, estado, llamado. And now it's ido, leído. Very simple. If the verb ends in AR, which hablar does to speak, and usar to use, and practicar, and estar, and llamar, those are all what we'd call AR verbs. They end in AR. If it's not that, which means it either ends in ER or IR, then it's not ado, but ido. That's all you need to remember. It's either ado or ido. So, leer is to read. So, read is leído, leído. And again, you don't need to commit this to memory. We've got these little units that you're going to know by the end, which you'll be able to use straight away. So, leído ese libro, read that book. Pedido el postre. Pedir is to order. Pedido el postre. Ordered the dessert. It could be pedido el vino. Ordered the wine. Pedido el café. Ordered the coffee. And our last one here is oído. Oído is heard, because oír is to hear. So, oído el mensaje, heard the message. Okay, so we're going to come back to this in a minute. Let's go to the third column. There's just a couple of things in here. Dos veces, twice. Well, it's actually two times that we would say twice. Dos veces. Two times or twice. And varias veces. Several times. Varias veces. And the th, the th sound that you hear there in veces. In Latin America, that doesn't exist. It's pronounced as an s. So, dos veces. Varias veces. And of course, it doesn't matter which one you use. Latin Americans in Spain are understood perfectly, and Spaniards in Latin America are perfectly understood. Obviously, it kind of makes sense if you're living in Spain or that's where you're going to be going predominantly, then it would be a little bit silly to just practice the Latin American one and vice versa. If you're going to be going to or staying or living in Latin America, it would make sense to use the S sound. Right, let's go to the starting point. So we've already seen that E is I have, E, so that we can say E estado, E practicado, I have. And I've added ya. Ya is already. So, already I have, but in English we would say I have already. So, ya he is I have already. Or we'd probably shorten that down to I've already something. Ya he estado, I've already been, whatever it might be. And I've added the we version, ya hemos, because it's very easy to Remember, all we verbs in Spanish have mos at the end. So, hemos is nice and easy to learn. We have already. Ya hemos. And for even more versatility, I had. So, I had already is ya había. Ya había. I had already. And again, the plural with the mos on the end, just as before. Ya habíamos. We had already. Okay, just before we do some practice, I'm just going to get you to identify various bits and pieces here to get you a bit more familiar with the language. 
Okay, can you find the word that means that? That. Well, there are three options there that you could have chosen. You could have chosen eso in talked about that. You could have chosen esa as in that excuse. And you could have chosen ese for that book. Now, we're not going to spend much time on this because it's not the main target language of the lesson. Uh, but it's good to know it because it's something that will keep cropping up and you'll be able to refer back to this. So, eso is when I talked about that. We haven't specified what that is. So, it's neither masculine nor feminine because we have, it's not an object. It's just that, the thing that we're talking about. That excuse. Well, excuse is a noun. It's feminine. Excusa. And so, we have the feminine that, which is esa. Esa, esa excusa. Then for ese libro, libro is a noun, and it's masculine. So we need masculine that, ese libro. So it's fairly straightforward. Eso, there isn't a noun to talk about, so we can't give it a gender. We can't say whether it's masculine or feminine because it's just that, the thing that we're talking about. Esa, because it's feminine, and ese, because it's masculine. Okay, what's the word for ordered? Pedido, pedido. So how would you say ordered a coffee? Ordered a coffee. Pedido un café. Pedido un café. What's the word for already? Ya, ya. And how do we say we have? Hemos. Hemos. Okay, so just listen to the phrases that I say and look at the table and work out what's being said. Ya hemos practicado esa lección varias veces. Ya hemos practicado esa lección varias veces. We have already practiced that lesson several times. What would this be? Ya he oído ese mensaje dos veces. Ya he oído ese mensaje dos veces. I've already heard that message twice. What would this be? Ya hemos estado en Madrid varias veces. Ya hemos estado en Madrid varias veces. We have already been in Madrid or been to Madrid several times. What would this be? Ya había usado esa excusa dos veces. Ya había usado esa excusa dos veces. And with that one, it might have been El problema es The problem is And I've already used that excuse twice. What would it be if I said, Ya había llamado a Miguel varias veces. Ya había llamado a Miguel varias veces.
I had already called Miguel several times. Okay, let's swap over now and you do the Spanish. So look at the grid and you might get to the point where you can start looking away, but it's fine to rely on it as much as you need. Okay, so how would you say we've already used that excuse twice? Ya hemos usado esa excusa dos veces. Ya hemos usado esa excusa dos veces. And what about, we've already talked about that. Well, let's just leave it like that. We don't have to say anything else. We've already talked about that. Ya hemos hablado de eso. Ya hemos hablado de eso. How about... I've already ordered the dessert twice. Ya he pedido el postre dos veces. Ya he pedido el postre dos veces. How about... I've already been to... Paris. Let's change it. I've already been to Paris. What would that be? Ya he estado en París. Ya he estado en París. And the reason why this kind of approach is so versatile, we could just substitute, for example, already for never. Nunca. Nunca he. I've never. Nunca he. I've never practiced that lesson. Nunca he practicado esa lección. How would you say? I've never been to Berlin. Nunca he estado en Berlín. Nunca he estado en Berlín. How about... We've never used that excuse. Nunca hemos usado esa excusa. Nunca hemos usado esa excusa. So I've squeezed a lot into this lesson just so that you can get a sense of how quickly you can move forward. Obviously, in the main pro Spanish course, the steps are smaller so that you don't get overloaded, but you still end up at the same destination, which is being able to hold conversations in Spanish. Okay, so before we move on to the more advanced part of this lesson, if you haven't checked it out already, then head over to prospanish.co.uk where you can download the full Levels 1 to 6 course. Okay, so on to the more advanced part of this lesson. Now, a lot of it we're going to leave as it is. Uh, we're just going to change a couple of things. So, hablado con él, talked to him or with him. Hablado con él. That's the only change there. And then if we go to the first column, we've got cuando, when, después de que, after, and no hasta que, not until. Now think about what we've been doing in the, the main part of this video. So I have... So we're looking at things like when I've talked to him or after I've practiced this lesson or not until we've ordered the dessert. And we saw earlier that E for I have and hemos for we have. 
but we can't use those now. And the reason is that when, after, until, and when, when the next part is referring into the future, we need to use the subjunctive after that. So consider these two alternatives. When I get home, we'll have dinner. That's referring to something that's going to happen in the future. But if I said, when I get home, I have dinner. In other words, usually when I get home, I have dinner. That's not a reference to the future, but to your kind of daily routine. And so when it's not referring to the future, it's referring to daily routine, then no subjunctive is required and we can just use the indicative e and emos. But here we're referring to the future, so our e has to become aya, the subjunctive version, aya, I have, and ayamos, we have. So have a listen to these sentences and work out what they mean. Cuando haya hablado con él. When I've talked to him. So we'd need a bit more context for this to make sense, but it would be perhaps a reply to when are you going to do such and such, or when I've talked to him, or when I've talked to him, I will carry on with whatever else. So cuando haya hablado con él. What about no hasta que haya pedido el postre. No hasta que haya pedido el postre. What does that mean? Not until I've ordered the dessert. How about después de que hayamos practicado esa lección? Después de que hayamos practicado esa lección. After we've practiced that lesson. So after we've practiced that lesson, we can do some more conversation practice, whatever it might be. How about cuando hayamos leído ese libro? Cuando hayamos leído ese libro, compraremos otro. We could just finish it. We'll buy another one. So, when we've read that book. How about... Cuando hayamos oído el mensaje. When we've heard the message. No hasta que hayamos estado en Madrid. No hasta que hayamos estado en Madrid. Not until we've been to Madrid. Okay, let's swap it around. How would you say when we've talked to him? Cuando hayamos hablado con él. Cuando hayamos hablado con él. How about not until I've called Miguel. No hasta que haya llamado a Miguel. No hasta que haya llamado a Miguel. So the conversation might be, well, shall I cancel it? Not until I've called Miguel. How about after I've read that book? Después de que haya leído ese libro. Después de que haya leído ese libro. How about when we've used that excuse? 
cuando hayamos usado esa excusa. Cuando hayamos usado esa excusa. How would you say? After we've ordered the dessert. Después de que hayamos pedido el postre. Después de que hayamos pedido el postre. And that concludes today's post-Spanish lesson. As mentioned earlier, if you're looking to become a confident and a competent speaker of Spanish, then head over to the ProSpanish website where you can download the full Levels 1 to 6 course.